In this, the twelfth part of my video series about multivariable calculus, we're going to be using Mathematica in a new way, taking a little detour from what we've done recently where we've been focused on using parametric curves to model motion and figuring out the distance traveled and speed as a function of time. We'll still see those graphs in this video, but we'll be doing something new too. I've shown you how to use the command grid already, but we're going to emphasize another use of the command grid as well as something called graphics and inset to do something kind of neat in this, in this video. In the last video, we created a system of parametric equations that generated something called a Lissajous figure, and that is what's going on in this example that we see down here, involving trig functions that are simple, but they do have different frequencies and periods here because the coefficients of t are different in these functions. The Lissajous figures are pretty, but they're a little hard to understand, so our goal is to understand their graphs. So we're going to graph this curve in the plane as well as the individual graphs of f and g to help us gain an understanding of how these simple trig functions can generate this more complicated figure. And we're going to think about the periods and frequencies of these different functions. So here's the basic Mathematica setup. I can enter these functions and we can see our animation from the last video. On the left you see the list Jew figure being traced out. On the right you see the corresponding distance traveled and speed functions that are showing you what's going on with the motion of the black dot as it moves around. All right. Before getting into uh, making the individual graphs of f and g by themselves, I want to talk a little bit about both grid and something else here. Before I talk about grid, in fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this code um, within the grid, in particular what I've highlighted here generates the Lissajous figure on the left. I'd like to take it out of the grid and put it on a new line of code and give it a name. I'm going to call it paraplot because it generates a parametric plot. This paraplot is really going to depend on the animation parameter b, so I really need to think of it as a function of b and type it this way. I can enter it now, and now I can see the plot of the Lissajous figure at any moment in time that I want. b is the animation parameter. I can pick a value of b like 3 and see what the parametric plot looks like at time 3. This is where the parametric curve is at time 3. I can pick a different value of time like 3.1 and see it move a little bit into the future. It's the piecing together of these different graphs that produces the animation. And now that I've defined the function I can see that. I'm going to do something similar with this other part of the plot here inside grid. This code right here generates the graph on the right of the distance and speed graphs. I'm going to cut that out paste it up here and give it a name as well. I'll call it, I guess, dist and speed plots plot of B. And likewise, I can enter that, plug in a specific value, B like 3, and see the graph of those functions when B is 3, right here. It's a snapshot of the animation. I can now go down here to the animation and I can type in paraplot b and dist and speed plot b. Enter that one shorter line of code and I see this exact same animation that we had before. Okay, sorry, it's kind of jerky. My computer processing speed is not quite up to par here. On other higher powered computers, this would move more smoothly. But it is an animation that we're seeing and we've modularized, we've separated the different lines of code into more understandable pieces. All right, now I'd like to make this graph that we saw even bigger. I'd like to add more plots, a plot of f and g by themselves. Uh, and we're going to use grid to continue making a bigger grid of plots. Grid is a command that just makes matrices, essentially. It can be a, a matrix of plots or it can be a matrix of letters like this. This is a one by two matrix. I could add a C, D, E in here to make it a 1 by 5 matrix. I could also make it a 2 by 5 matrix, add another row by putting a comma here and then another list of five elements like F, G, H, I, J. There's a 2 by 5 matrix. These are letters, but I can also do graphs, as you've seen. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to make a 2 by 2 matrix of graphs. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this distance speed plot into the lower right corner because that's where I'd like to put it. We'll see what we've got so far. And so now we have the same graph as before, but now the distance speed graph is in the lower right corner. 
I'd like to add a couple graphs to this picture. I'm going to add a graph of y. I'll call it y plot as a function of time. Um, but the plot itself will depend on the animation parameter b. Plot uh, g of t is the y coordinate. I think I'll make this thick and blue. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the paraplot and make its color purple. Red and blue are going to make purple is what's going to happen here. I need to fix a plot range. Uh, in the t direction, I go from 0 to 2 pi. In the y direction, maybe negative 1.2 to positive 1.2 would be good to pick. This will generate a graph of g of t for any moment in time, like that. I can do something similar for x, call it x plot instead of y plot, graph f instead of g, and I'll make this one red instead of blue. I think this looks good. We probably should label the axes for these things as well to emphasize how they should be labeled. Really for y, it's a graph of y versus t. Enter that. For x, it's a graph of x versus t. Change the x to a t and the y back to an x. Okay, I think everything's entered. And now I can go ahead and put the y plot and the x plot down in the grid here. I'll put the y plot in the upper right and the x plot in the lower left. Now we have a two by two matrix of plots. that are all related to each other. The parametric curve, again, in the upper left. The graph of y is a function of t in the upper right. The graph of x is a function of t in the lower left. And the distance and speed graphs in the lower right. Let me re-enter this and focus on something here. It would be nice to get these graphs to match up even more nicely. For one thing, maybe make the graphs of y and x as functions of time bigger. I'll go back up here and use image size medium for those see what happens. This is takes a bit of experimentation to get these to look right. That's better. It's still not perfect. It would also be nice, I think, since the Y graph keeps track of the up-down motion of this Lissajous figure, um, and the X graph keeps track of the left Y motion, it would ac actually be nice to take this graph of X as a function of time and rotate it 90, 90 degrees clockwise so that X goes left and right positive to the right, and t goes up and down, positive downward. You want to match up the x here is what I'm trying to do so that it's horizontal. You can do that by doing the following. This is a little tricky and I don't fully understand it myself, but I'll go ahead and do it for you. I'm going to put x plot inside another command called graphics, and inside that I'm going to put in another command called inset. And then do some funny things. Um, add in some extra options. I will try the following options. 2 comma 0.5 in a list, then another comma, 2 comma 0.5 again in a list, then another comma, automatic. I don't fully understand why that's necessary, but it does help things to work nicely. And then I'm going to put at the very end here another list, 0 comma 1, a negative 1 actually. Let's just see what happens. What happened? It, took the graph of x as a function of t and it turned it sideways at a 90 degree angle. I do know that, that it is the 0, negative 1 that does that rotation at a 90 degree angle clockwise. It's not quite lined up so that its t-axis lines up with the y-axis here in the upper left. If I change some of these, I think maybe if I make this a 0 here and a 0 here, it might line up better. That's better at least. Still not quite perfect. You can continue modifying it. Um, it's not perfect in a couple other ways. We're not seeing the full labeling of the x-axis here, axis here, and we're also not seeing the t-axis fully. I could fiddle around with this thing, for example, 1.8 and 1.8 instead of 2 to make us see the axis better, I think, yep. But the t-axis is still a little bit problematic. You have to fiddle around with it a bit, but the key thing is I want you to see here how these graphs are related to each other. Again, y keeps track of the up-down motion, x keeps track of the left-right motion, and we should watch this a bit, and you can see how these graphs that are the blue and red that have different frequencies in different periods, because of that mismatch, 
that's why you're getting a more complicated kind of figure here. But the up-down motion is being kept, kept track of by y is a function of time. That's the g of t. That's got a period of 2 pi over 3, which is a little bit bigger than 2. And a frequency of, the, of a reciprocal of that would be 3 over 2 pi, which would be somewhat close to a half or so. Um, and then the x graph down here, it's a little hard to see. You have to turn your head sideways to kind of see it. It's, uh, free, its period is 2 pi over 5 because it was cosine of 5t. And its frequency is 5 divided by cosine, uh, 5 divided by 2 pi. Altogether, though, when you put them together in the parametric curve, the period is not 2 pi over 3 and it's not 2 pi over 5. In fact, it's 2 pi. That's pretty interesting. You don't get back to where you started until after 2 pi units of time have gone by. Actually, that would not always be the case. If I chose to make uh, this 5 a 6, for example, then the period of the Lissager figure is no longer 2 pi. I'll let you experiment with that if you want. Actually, my exercise is something similar. I put an A here instead of a 5. If you choose different values of A greater than 3, you get different kinds of Lissajous figures. I guess even A equals 3 could be considered to be 1, though it would be a circle. This is your exercise. Um, I would encourage you to think about it, even if you don't have Mathematica. And in fact, I, I meant to emphasize, I hope you got something out of this, even if you don't have Mathematica. Not only do we see these graphs being generated as time goes by, but we can see different graphs for different values of A. And actually, if A is an irrational multiple of 3, it turns out that the Lissajous figure is not even periodic. It would end up um, filling in, essentially, the entire unit, unit square as time goes by. We're not seeing that here, but if we let time go further into the future, that's what would happen if A was a, an irrational multiple of 3. And I'll end this video here.